Welcome to another episode of Master Mind Bites. Hi, my name is Falun Chua. I'm an entrepreneur, business strategist, real estate investor, speaker, and also a best-selling author. And every single day, I have the opportunity to help others unlock the potentials and guide them to succeed. Today on Master Mind Bites, I want to feature somebody I, I have a lot of respect for, and that is Mr. Michael Eisner, the former CEO of Disney. And the thing is, the reason why I do this show is because over the last few years, I've had the privilege to meet some of the most amazing people on earth, some of the most, the masters of their industry, the masters of their skill set, and being in the presence, being able to meet them and learn from them has been an absolute honor for me. And I just want to pass some of those stories on, pass some of those successes on, and le lessons learned on to you and share that wealth of knowledge. And today, like I said, it's Michael Eisner. If I ask you some of the questions uh, such as, what is one of your most favorite Disney moments? What is some of your most um, memorable Disney experiences at Disney World or on your cruises or some of the stuff that you like? Most likely than not, it has something to do with Michael Eisner. Now, in the history of Disney, there has been two people that has really, really made a big effect. Number one, of course, is Mr. Walt Disney himself, because if not for Walt Disney, there would be no Disney. So he is the number one person that has really, really put Disney on the map. He was the face. He was the creative genius. He was the visionary for that. But second to Walt Disney is most likely going to be Michael Eisner. If it was not for Michael Eisner, Disney as we know it would not be what it is today. Michael Eisner has changed a lot of stuff about Disney, has expanded Disney, has really added so much more value to Disney that, that to the point where it's a worldwide phenomenon that so many people recognize Disney for. And a lot of those things is because of Michael Eisner. Ever since 1966, when Walt Disney passed away, Disney was missing their visionary uh, person. They were miss missing the face, the creativity of everything that it was actually built upon. Disney had that great uh, vision, had that great love for creating, that great love for innovating. And it was because of Walt Disney himself that Disney came out and became one of the powerhouses that it was in the 1960s uh, and also the 1970s. So the thing is, after he passed away, they were missing that element. And then after that period of time, from 1966 all the way to 1984, they were kind of just dwindling. Uh, their filming, uh, their animation department was not doing very well. Their films were not doing very well. They were just following suit of what was left over what, of what Disney what had envisioned or what he's already implemented and just kind of following the path as it was every single day. And the thing is, it didn't grow. It did not expand. It did not uh, reach new heights that Disney would have had if he was still in the help realm. So therefore, Disney decided to, as a company, decided to bring somebody else in who had that passion, who had that vision, and that was Michael Eisner. Now, having been in the company for 21 years, Michael Eisner, Eisner really revitalized the entire Disney company. And he, over all those years, there's five main things that I thought really stuck out to me. Uh, it was his passion, his love for what he was working on, but his, his passion for Disney itself um, and how it really helped them expand the success of Disney. Uh, whether it's the passion of business, where it's the passion of expansion, the di passion of Disney, he really embodied that passion. The second thing is he truly believed that diversity forces creativity. And throughout some of this video, you'll see how diversity really creates more creativity. The next thing is his ability to build relationships. And it was some of the most uh, most important relationships that he's built that was allowed, allowed him to make some connections that really, really grew Disney as we knew it today. The next thing I want to talk about is his, uh, his mindset of if it's not growing, then it will eventually die. And when he looked at Disney at that time, he knew he had to grow the company or else eventually it's going to die. And the last thing he really believed in was that the brand is a living entity. It is enriched or undermined cumulatively over time, the product of a thousand small gestures. And throughout this video, you can see how that was also one of the most important elements of his success. Now, during that period of time when Walt was gone, like I said before, uh, the film industry for Disney was not doing very well. It was kind of dying. And it was, there wasn't very many big hits during that time. Now, the thing is, it, they also lost that face of Disney. So when Michael Eisner came in, the very first thing he did was he became that face again. He had that 
vision. He had that uh, ability to reconnect with his audience. He was able to build relationships with the people that he was talking to and the people he was reaching out to. He was the second person to ever host the wonderful world of Disney. And that allowed him to really connect to his audience and build relationships there. He was once again the face, the visionary of Disney, and that's what Disney needed once again in order for Disney to grow, grow, grow. And the next thing is about the diversity. How was he able to create different things based on diversity? And he started off by, um, by restarting Who Framed Roger Rabbit, that, Rabbit, Who Framed Roger Rabbit, that movie. And from that point on, revitalized the entire animation's era for Disney. Uh, you name it, if you liked it, it was probably part of his time at Disney. For instance, Little Mermaid, Aladdin, Lion King, Mulan, uh, Hercules, and Tarzan, and uh, Pocahontas. Those were some of the most, uh, most amazing movies during that period of time, and to this day is considered the classics of animation. And that's why during that period of time, it was known as the renaissance of Disney animation films, and which is why uh, people also um, recognize Michael Eisner as the Renaissance man for uh, the Disney company. And over the history of Disney, um, uh, there has only been two people that has made such a great difference for Disney. And that, like I said, was uh, Walt Disney himself and also Michael Eisner. And you're going to see more about that here. Um, like I said, the diversity really increased the creativity. And because he was able to bring in different people into the realm, uh, he had the right people in the right places. He's brought in Frank Wells to look over the um, the the day in and day out uh, operations of the business, but he also brought in Jeffrey Katzenberg, who was really the person behind all the animation films at that time and really changed the landscape of the animation films for Disney. Now, back then, before he was part of Disney, he was involved with NBC, he was involved with Paramount, he was involved with ABC, and those connections that he made, those relationships that he made, allowed him to bring in different things and allowed him to really lead to more successes. Uh, it allowed him to have like, the very first licensing deals with George Lucas and Lucas Films and also Star Wars and Indiana Jones. He was also the very first person to bring in a collaboration of Looney Tunes and Disney characters all in one movie, uh, and that was Who Framed Roger Rabbit, and nobody saw that before. And the thing is, because nobody saw it before, the Who Framed Roger, Roger Rabbit really made uh, box office records at the time. People were interested to see how it was done. People were interested to, to see how the collaboration was going to be and all that great stuff. And that then led on to more and more movies. Little Mermaid, Aladdin, Beauty and Beast, Lion King. One right after new, uh, another was another big box office hit. Um, he was a person that brought in new ideas. And because he was able to bring in new ideas, it was because of that diversity. It was because of all those relationships that he built before. He was able to bring in people like Tom Hanks and also Spielberg to direct movies and also star in movies at the time too, because he was very, very well connected. He had many, many relationships built during his time with Paramount and uh, NBC and ABC and all that great stuff. But like I said, he was a person of big new ideas. He was a person who came in and brought was a visionary and he kept on growing the business. He kept on building and growing Disney as a whole and also as a brand. He first introduced the musicals in Disney and to this day the Lion King musical is still one of the most well-known uh, musicals uh, out there, um, won many awards and has also been one of the number one grossing uh, musicals of all time. He started the Disney store that you probably have, uh, has, have, have visited in at any local mall that you have. Um, also he introduced gaming into Disney. He introduced the cruise line. So if you enjoy the cruises, and I've, I know a lot of people who love the cruises, that was also because of Mr. Michael Eisner. Now, not only did he expand with different ideas and expand the brand of Disney, but he also expanded the theme parks. He added two parks in Paris. He added another park in LA. He added another park in Japan. He opened up two more parks in Florida. And then also not to mention the water parks and, and multiple 
multiple of resorts and more theming and more fun and more attractions that he had a great hand in as well. He also started the uh, Pirates of the Caribbean series. So he was constantly adding, he was constantly growing. And like I said, if it's not growing, it's probably gonna die. And he most likely kept on growing the Disney brand, kept on growing the Disney name and kept on growing the Disney um, uh, effect on er other people and throughout the entire world with all these parks, all these movies. And sure enough, like I said, he was a person who really truly believed that the brand was something that you have to keep on growing, kept on adding thousands of little gestures that added to the uh, enrichment of that brand and also what may could be an undermine of that brand as well. And sure enough, he had a lot of decisions that he made that may or may not have been the right decision. However, he the there was no doubt that he added so much more value to Disney than not adding to Disney. He introduces the Star Wars connections. He's added the, uh, what do you call it? The, like I said, the, the theme parks and movies, the Renaissance, all that great stuff. It was all because of Michael Eisner. Now, the thing is, uh, throughout his period of time there, he has done so many great things to the company. He has added so much more value. And we said before, if it's not growing, it's probably dying. And sure enough, he made that company grow, not from a worldwide footprint wise, but also in the value of Disney itself. Uh, before he was the CEO of Disney, Disney as a company was known as a film and themes park industry that was probably worth $1.8 billion. But after he left, by the time he was done in 2005, it was worth over $80 billion, a, a global media franchise that he created for Disney. So like I said, he has so many great life lessons, so many things that you can apply to your own business, that passion, that constantly wanted to grow your business, grow your brand, the, the thousands of small gestures that you can build up to increase the brand value of your company, build great relationships because you never know when you're gonna need those relationships again. And also bring in lots of different people to help you out. That diversity of ideas, that diversity of people and collaboration will for sure increase the creativity of your business, your brand, and also the products you come out with. So like I said, he is the Renaissance man for Disney. He is an incredible visionary. He is a fan first. He is passionate about what he does. And that's why he was such a very, such a successful CEO for Disney and built it to who, uh, to what we know today. So that's why I believe that he is somebody that we could really learn from and apply some of those lessons into our business. And um, I'm a big fan of Disney, as many of you know, and there's a lot of stuff I love that Disney does. And I always try and learn more and more things by watching Disney and what it does. And every time I go to theme parks, I'm reminded of what Michael Eisner has done. So until next time, today is the day to unlock your potential. I'll see you later.